agents. We've got Bill Crespo today. Uh, I think we've talked to him a few times already over the last few months. Yeah, one, one, more, one time before, a couple months ago, yeah. Yeah, dude, and it's nice to have you back on today. Today we're going to be talking about how to make your competition irrelevant. And I love that topic because uh, for those of you who know, I love to read. I just finished reading a couple months ago, The Infinite Game by Simon Sinek. Yep. And he talks about really playing this really long term so not to worry so much about your competition uh, because it's going to be there anyway so bill welcome back appreciate yeah. it, buddy uh thanks thanks for doing this man and again this one's sponsored by espresso agent we'll put up a little link up there for those of you that are looking to get more information on that so let's get started man How yeah you, you know you were saying that about the book and it's interesting that what got me to understand this was i read the book blue ocean you oh read the book blue ocean? i love that book yeah, that's what years ago I read that. And that's what got me thinking about how do you make your competition irrelevant? And I think now more than ever, um, and we probably won't mention names of other companies, but it starts with a Z coming in and starting to take over our business. And, and, and if we don't understand how to make our competition irrelevant, they will take it over. These companies will come in and take it because we've got to communicate to the, to the consumer that we have something. And I think uh, and I'll just say this from an editorial comment about this. I think what these companies don't understand is that, that really the consumer does want to work one-on-one -on -one with someone. I, I think this, this technology is great, but they still want to have a one-to-one -one contact. I mean, you, there's, a, there's a, I was consulting a medical company, a hospital here in Norfolk, Virginia, that was saying how um, doctors are operating, you know, remotely. I mean, they got robots and doing this thing, but really, would you want to be operated by someone remotely? I mean, come on. That's a little scary. I mean, in the world we live in, uh, no. But if that's the only type of, yes. you know, uh, then that's different, right? Yeah. That, yeah. I mean, if, you're li if your life's depending on it. But in this case, I think what's happening today is that we're selling too much stuff and we're not selling ourselves properly. Because it's great. like my dog could run faster than yours, right? I've got a German Shepherd. I got a Dane. I got a Great Dane. I got fifteen thousand websites. I got two thousand websites, and we're selling stuff. People can always take stuff, right? Everybody has more stuff than you, but I think we've got to get better at selling us. What do we, me, you? What do we bring to the table and communicate that in the way that it's the consumer goes? You know what? This is something that I want. I want him or her. And we're selling too much of the stuff, in my opinion. What do you think? You know, I agree with you. I think the challenge becomes, here's what happens, uh, and, and which is perfect segue into this. And that's, we, we, we get so naturally scared of companies like Zillow, like Redfin, and like Open Door coming yep, into yep. the world that we live in and not knowing how to respond because that's just our nature right? Our nature as humans is, is we like to, we like to just kind of always be aware of how things work and everything that we don't understand, we kind of fear, mm -hmm. right? And so what we need to look at it like is this, this is an opportunity for us in the world that we live in to differentiate ourselves and say, well, what do we really stand for and how can we stand out and be different, right? right. Because that's, that's where we're heading into that we can't stop Zillow or whoever comes in, There's, they're yeah. going to come in no matter what. But how are we different? Take this opportunity to to show that to the client. How do, what's the differentiation between that and then you know then you're you're going to see I think people having difficulty with that unless they start to study how to do that. And one of the things that I talk a lot about is being able to have a high level high level of IQ, meaning influence quotient, not intel, you know intellect quotient, right? So the IQ you've got to know that you've got to raise your IQ because if you don't, they're going to go with a company that says, you know what? You don't need those guys. We've got a laundry list of things. We're going to make it worry free. You drop your keys off. You don't have to sell your house. You don't have any agents. Go buy another one of these houses and it's going to be an easy thing. But without them seeing the value in us, and I know we always talk about the, the value package, but it's gotten to the point that we've got to up the game. We've got to have, uh, and one of the things that I read that I think is really important that um, I'm not sure if, if we use this or not, is that you have to have an IP, your intellectual property. For instance, I'll give you an example of, hey, uh, Bob and Susan, I'm looking forward to working with you and sharing my seller advantage program, or whatever you want to call it. 
because if it's just, I want to list your home, it, it doesn't sound like it has so much value to it. But if you put a name to it, uh, my seller advantage program or my buyer advantage program, now it has a little more credence. It sounds like it's something specific. Now, you can say it, but you got to now back it up with what you're going to do for them. But it has to have some type of IP to it so that uh, it appears to be something specific uh, with a plan and you called it something. Does that make sense? That's, that's, that's totally right on, man. And I think what happens is the more you stop relying on just one source, right? For instance, look, there's nothing wrong with people using Zillow, right? right. But it's got to be part of a bigger plan right? Exactly. It's got to be like, well, maybe you should actually have five sources, at least three sources. And it should be something along the lines of, okay, you're online, you've got Zillow, that's awesome. But also try Facebook and Google AdWords. Now, you also want to create something out of the expireds and for sale by owners, right? It, go that route through Espresso. Yep. And don't forget about your sphere and your past clients, right? Make it, make it at least a tripod, yeah. The, the thing is that we get so scared because we're like, well, they're just taking our only source of income. But if you make this a relationship business, you know, after calling all these expireds and for sale by owners for years, and you've built this relationship with them where you're not just spamming them and calling them just to get their business, but really wanting to help and then inviting them to your client appreciation events and then making them part of your whole real sphere, it becomes a relationship business. And that's what you and I are after. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's interesting and you know, I, I know you study, you guys study this, but we don't, no one's really talked to us about the funnel and exactly how to engage the person through a process. Right. I was talking to someone the other day and said, listen, if you send an email out, you got to tag that email to something else. We're trying to bring this person who's outside into our world. So you've got to have little by little steps to get them inside of us. You know, that's where social media comes in, but it's, it's not a one shot deal and they, they're gonna love you. You've got to have some value to it. So we're talking about having some type of, you know, uh, CTA, right, call to action on everything that's sent out to keep, it's almost like a rope. You keep tonguing them closer to you. So the point that they're now in front of you and now you sell your value package, your, your uh, intellectual property to them. So they go, gosh, this guy's different. This lady's different, but it's a process. I think at times we just want to make a call and not follow up. <laughs> and then we just lost that one, find out some other agent just listed it. You know, we, we also have for rent by owners is another good source to call that we're not calling because you may find an investor with multiple houses. He may rent this one out, but has three more. It's another great source. That's true, man. Here, what you said right there is super key. And that's, we're always, as agents, and I think it's because some of us don't come from a from a business background. A lot of us, this is our third, fourth, fifth career even. Yeah. And, and we all come from an employee mindset, right? So it's hard for us to, to then come into this business and say, well, how can we actually create a business out of this through building relationships and running it like a business, right? All the finance part, Right. all the independent contractor things that so it, it's a complicated thing because we wear so many hats but you hit it right on where we're trying to build a business through the relationships that that we go one at a time right or a few at a time if you if you have tech leveraging that right but i love i love that you're saying that man that's you know, i had a i had a friend of mine in washington dc he was an agent with long and foster he's still an agent and he did something really interesting because we also have to train our mind if we're going to make the competition relevant, we have to change our approach. We can't be like everybody else and approach everything the same way. What he did, and this is years ago, he would say that every deal that he did, he found another transaction in the network of people that they knew. So when he saw one person, he saw two deals. All, and that's his mind was just focused on every transaction was two transactions because he went deep into their network purposefully. And so he said he got so good at this, Tristan, that he ended up saying, man, I think I can go down deep two more. Dude, but, that's, but, that's so key. Isn't it cool? I mean, just to think, hey, every deal I do, I'm going to find another deal with their friends. And uh, he just kept digging and kept going down, found another one. So it was so much more easier for him to do two transactions out of one person he met. That's, oh. that's key, man. Can I, can I share a story with you? Really? Yeah, man. That'd be great. Here, so there's there's a real estate agent out of long beach that we just interviewed a week and a half ago her name is barbara betts 
And she said something that, again, you just reminded me of um, because you both, both work out of this relationship uh, mindset. And she said, look, I'm, I have a list of 700 and about 780 people on my, on my solid database. This isn't just like a database that we just spam routinely mm -hmm. and send properties to. This is, this is my like real database that I take care of. And from those 780 or so, I have about 72 that are like my A clients, okay. A plus. That means that these people are, are going to get invited to my client appreciation event all the time. I'm going to talk to them on the phone at least once a month and maybe text them because they want to hear from me. Right. And they're going to give me a referral probably once a year. Now, with that, she says, a lot of people say, well, isn't 700 plus people, isn't that a lot? I mean, what are you going to sell them a home every year? She's like, no, you're looking at it. You're looking at it in a different way. And this is what you said that remind, reminded me of. Yeah. She said, I'm selling through them, not to them. Right. I thought that's super brilliant. And you just said the same thing, man. So, yeah. And you know, I think sometimes we get hung up. What do I say? How do I, listen, a great script that I heard from one of these top agents was, who do you know that I should know? Simple. Yeah. And you know what, he, Tristan, this is the coolest thing. He would give at the end of uh, settlement or closing or maybe even the relationship. He goes, listen, while you're buying a house with me, you're going to probably have your friends say, how's it going? And they're really what they're asking is, how am I doing with you? So I, I wouldn't mind you giving my name to them. So that was one thing. Then at the end of closing, he would give them a form that had one through 10. Mm -hmm. name, address, phone number. And on top of it, who do you know that I should know? Hey, I'm going to give you this form and listen, I'll pick it up next week. Just give me a list of your friends and actually pick it up. Listen, if you get three or four, I have a list of 10 that you never had before, but this was a mechanism that he did purposefully at the end of every deal he closed or went to escrow with, he gave the form to them and said, listen, here's my, who do you know that I should know form. I'm sure you got a lot of friends that are just like you. And I love working with you. Do you mind just filling it out, go to your wedding list or whatever you have and fill it out. So he'll get back three, five, 10 names back. And that's how he went deep into their friends. And that's so it's just something that we got to do because I'm telling you right now that the skill that we need to have now more than ever is our ability to communicate at a high level because the, this whole thing now becomes the product, right? The ability, Harvard did a study. This is really weird that this is coming up, but they said, universally all over the world that the one area that salespeople have a difficulty with is mm -hmm. showing empathy to the client at any level because we're too busy trying to close. So there's a technique of showing empathy. In other words, making sure you understand their position. So the person who does that better has mm -hmm. a connection. Dude, you just reminded me of a book I picked up uh, two weeks ago. I started listening and that's a, uh, it's called uh, you're not listening. Oh, that sounds like I got to get that. Right. It just came out um, a, uh, maybe a couple months ago. Yeah. And it's, uh, it says what you're missing and why it matters. This is exactly what you're telling me, right? Yeah. yeah. I, and then Harvard did this freaking study. I'm going, how can we miss that? How do we miss that opportunity? A uh, guy worked for me that was selling Rolls Royce jet engines to, um, I guess, the airlines, right? So they, they shop for engines. And, mm -hmm. and it, it was relationship. He said, I said, I, I was a top producer. He said, and I go, well, how did you do it? I just understood their position. I went to lunch with them. I did the whole thing and, and I had connected with them. I mean, it's a Rolls Royce jet engine, which is interesting is that they rent those engines. Those engines on those planes are not bought by the company. They're built by Rolls Royce or some other company and they have hours on and then they, they're paying for those engines, which is really interesting. But he said, I, it was relationship. So that's a high ticket item. And it was Harvard saying that we're not empathetic enough. What do we have to change? Well, I think here's what I think, man. And this is from, from reading a, a crap ton of books and, and um, from just being exposed to so many different CEOs and executives because of lab code agents. Sure. What I'm noticing is that as our culture shifted into the information age where we get bombarded from every type of, information our, our televisions are talking to us our phones are always connected to us right we have alexa listening on yeah 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 the there time. she is she yeah. just went and, on yeah and uh, everything is listening and bombarding us with information what's happening is it's it's causing us to have a, a shorter attention span because of it 
And we're having to relearn to adjust to these things so that we can actually listen to somebody instead of always trying to be like, okay, what's next? What's next? What's next? Right? Right. right. And it, it's a mindset shift. I think the people that, that like you and me who have been in this a little bit longer, um, she, she's still wondering what's going on. Um, <laughs> and I've been a little bit longer have that capacity because we grew up in a world that wasn't we weren't bombarded as much with this so uh, i think that's a challenge that we're going to see a lot more of a lot more of in the coming years so it's it's nice that they're addressing it now uh, but we just need steps to actually be able to take for certain people to be able to adjust and listen just shut up and listen yeah if you haven't seen the um interview that was done with the ceo of zillow uh, it was the last thing he did about a month ago with CNBC. It's going to shock the heck out of a lot of people what his plan is. He never said, I'm taking the business away from the real estate people. He was really good in how he said it, but you need to watch that YouTube video. Understand what's coming if you're not prepared. And it's going to be your ability to communicate your services. And I think really technically we have to upgrade everything we do how we communicate, understanding personality styles and knowing how to adjust. So you make the competition irrelevant and it just starts from the conversation you're having with someone. They go, you know what? This guy, this lady is different. Something about her that I feel that I could trust. They understand my position better. You know, how to, how to reiterate that back to them that, you know, here's what I heard you say, Mrs. Seller, this is what's an issue for you. And did I get that right? Just taking some time. And like you said, we're rushing through the most critical aspect of the relationship, which is the first initial contact and set the tone right so that we make the competition irrelevant because most agents are going to come in and drill in, overly sell. And that little meter goes off in the back of the consumer head goes, salesperson, selling Dude, me, that's you know? That's right on here. I'm going to share with you again, just because you keep on bringing so such amazing topics back to back to back, dude. Yeah. Um, when when I call expireds, I probably hear that the most. And people are the reason people are so tired of you, or not you specifically, but agents calling yeah. expireds and for sale by owners, is because they're hearing the same thing over and over and over again, and it's not authentic, dude. That's the problem. So. Yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting my list in the morning from espresso agent and I call every other day now because I'm running the team on the managing side, but we, we practice scripting and I listen in and I make calls. And so the way that I make calls is look, I, I'm talking to an actual person. I don't just go in, Hey, but this is just with Keller Williams Realty. I hope you're having a good day. I saw that your home just came off the market. Are you thinking of listing it or who, who's the best agent? Right. I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Are you familiar with the techniques I use? Yeah. It's like, just shut up. Just, <laughs> just treat this person like a real person and be like, hey, Bill, it's, it's Tristan with Keller Williams. How are you today, man? And you're like, oh, you know what? This is the 50th call or the 80th. I'm so, I'm like, the, I'm really sorry, Bill. I don't, I don't want to be the, the 60th person to tell you the same thing. Uh, but what I'll do is at least I'll do my part to just take you off of our list. And uh, this is the way it works. So we usually subscribe to a list and we get your phone number, but we'll tell our office to remove it completely. And by the way, Bill, are you still thinking of making a move in the next year or so? And you see, it's a lot softer yeah. in the approach. Yeah, softer. I'm, I'm listening. I want to listen to you and I want to help you. Right. And so that's what people aren't doing. So of course, if you call me and you're using a Mike Ferry script, I'm going to, I'm just going to hang up right there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been, it's, you know, at one time it worked, and I think a lot of it's because, um, well, the, as you said, the information age, right? Th these consumers have better techniques than we do because they know how to shut us down, and we actually believe it because we have no technique. But what you just said, uh, another thing that, I, that I've seen used really effectively, hey, hey, I'm not sure if you can help me. Boom, right? That triggers the mind to go, well, let me hear what they're saying. So now that, now that, holds that conversation a little bit tighter. It's what I call the rejection free opener, right? How much you can help me? I'm calling with the homes to sell and just that same thing. It, it, when I used to role play with these guys that were so good, they're almost like actors. Remember that in the old days when they go, gosh, you must, you must be just tired of these real estate people. And that's all a technique that that person's using. But you know, it's hard to be real every time, but this is our job. We've got, this is our job. Our job is to communicate in a way that that person drops that invisible guard, right? That, that fence that's between them and us, and it goes down. So they feel comfortable. And then you ask the questions, you get the right information. And I really believe that we got to get face to face. The other thing Harvard said is, 
right? The highest rate of conversion is going to happen face to face. So either we close for the appointment or close just to see the house. Just get in front of these people. Yeah. We're sitting in our offices all day long. We're not getting out. Go knock on the door. Go see the person face to face because they've got this impression of a real estate agent and it's not a pretty sight. No, you know? it's definitely not. Man. <laughs> you know, they think of us as uh, of being, you know, something different. So I think to, to, in, to make that client or that potential person uh, in, your, in your marketplace, the competition irrelevant, we're going to have to really up our game a lot because the, that, oh, these companies are coming in to up their game. They have this fancy looking websites. They have a clear step-by-step -step process that they're communicating to the consumer and saying they don't need us. Mm -hmm. We've got to look at that and say, what is your step-by-step -step process and how you communicate it in a way that makes it worry-free for the consumer. And I, the other thing I wrote down here is how can we deliver what they used to call outer rim customer service? Mm -hmm. and that was a, a, something I studied a long time ago, or let's just say unexpected service like L.L. Bean, Disney. Uh, how can we deliver? And I, you know, it's different for everybody to think, but how can we deliver totally unexpected service to the consumer? Because we have an advantage over Zillow, we're one-on-one. -on -one. They're gonna, you're gonna call someone at a call center or, or somebody who's assigned to it and you don't know if you're gonna get the same person possibly. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm sure it's gonna be like that. But how can we deliver this unexpected service? Because the expectation that a consumer has with us on, on real estate services, it's not that big. You know, it's like, okay, I, I bought the house from him, he was nice. You know, we had a couple complications, never called me back, never called me on time. So we got to go from the inner circle, which is expected service, better service, even better service, but go out to that outer rim, which is what they call unexpected service, like LL Beam, Nordstrom's, Lexus. How can we do that in real estate? That's where we went. That's exactly where we, where we all need to be, man. I agree with you. Out of rent. Think about it. What would that be like? You know, I, had, I was talking to a hospital about the same thing for their patients coming into a hospital where uh, they have the worst rating on reviews on how they treat their patients. But, you know, one lady said in the room, she goes, well, what if we um, gave them an Uber um, little card for a free Uber or something like that? I mean, go out of the box. Unexpected. Here's unexpected. Why don't we just call people first before they call us? Yeah. That's right? <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think that's the key, man. That's, that's definitely the key. One of the things that we've done to, to do that just on, on the prospecting side, first on, on the relationship side, we, we've, had, we've been able to build a slight concierge type service. So people reach out to us or things that they wouldn't normally would, right? Yeah. Like one of our clients reached out to us to uh, book a uh, dining reservation at a hard to get place, right? I'm like, okay, we'll help you out, right? We're your go-to people, so we yeah, have to yeah, help. Yeah. And that's cool to me. Uh, but one of the things that we're doing with, with expires and for sale by owners is we, we're using technology to help us leverage and at the very beginning, when I first, uh, when I first started using uh, either either company, Agent Legend or Shout Boss, you can use either one. Uh, but I was starting to see agents use it kind of with the same mentality as everybody else. Let me just upload all of these expireds and for sale by owners that I'm getting from Espresso Agent into. Let me let me upload them into Shout Boss or Agent Legend and just let it do its thing. Yeah, just hopefully one of them gets back to me. Yeah, right? yeah, I'm like, that's so spammy, right? Yeah. So what we decided to do is instead, Bill, if I talk to you on the phone and you say, hey, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, I'm not interested, which is what everybody says almost. Um, I say, no problem. Is it okay if I stay in touch with you? Uh, and if I do have anybody, uh, I'll give you a call, right? I don't know if I will, but I want to leave that open for you to say, yes, contact me back. I say, great, Bill, I've got your cell phone number here. Uh, what's your email address? At least I can send you my information. Once I've got your email and your phone number, then at that point, I can put you into an auto drip through either of these companies, right? And voicemail, drop, text, email, video, email, video, text, but not spammy, not like, hey, sell with me. Hey, it's me again. I can sell your home. 
Yeah. It's more along the lines of giving back saying, Hey, I just read this article and you, it may be useful to you. I know you're trying to, you were trying to sell your home. Right. And Hey, Bill, I was thinking about you over here and here's some more information on this. Uh, here's a free value for your property, right? You can just go on here and get, get it yourself. Things that, that can help you out. Right. Yeah, and I've automated that process so that it doesn't sound spammy. Number one, and number two, I leverage it so that I can make certain calls and not have to worry about the follow-up. Right, right. Let me, um, I want to add, can I add something to that? Yeah, man. So, so you have an expired. An expired is either going to be upset, right, because it didn't work out and they're burnt out a little bit. So they're going to probably do something down the road. So it's our, we've got to measure whether or not this person has high motivation or not. So here's a, something that I've seen work. So the person goes, you know what, listen, we're not sure right now. And so you're always on their side. You're not trying to oversell, like you said. And you go, you know, let me ask you this question. I understand that you're waiting and you're kind of burnt out. If I get a phone call for someone interested in your neighborhood, would it be okay to call you? Now watch. That's, we're gonna, if they go right away, well, yeah, please do. You know they're motivated, right? If they go, no, listen, don't call me. We're, they're probably completely burnt out. It may not even come back on the market. But they may say, well, yes, please call me because they think you may have someone or they may suddenly come in. And that's true. If you have someone now, they said, yes. Now we need to get in front of that person face to face. So we got a affirmative and I said, great. So that I know more about your property is today or tomorrow convenient for me to stop by for 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. So we're not selling anything. It's logical for them to understand that if you have someone now, they may say, do you have a buyer right now? Here's where the agents screw up. They go, well, I have to see your house for, and that's how long has that been around? So I would, I would just say, no, if you don't have one, no, I don't have one right now, but we always have different buyers coming in, which is true. And then go back to the close. It's today or tomorrow convenient for me to stop by. Get in front of these people's faces as quickly as possible, because once you've established that eye to eye contact, they know that you're a sincere person because you're backing up with your voice and now with your visuals. And then it's easier for you to get in there for an appointment at that time or later on, you're in the top of the list. Very so that's true. one way of, of working it out. But I think we've got to be a little bit more understanding of the communication skills that we need to have. I think it's going to be much more skill based as this technology increases so that we make these other people in our marketplace look like they're just amateurs. And we've got to go to that, pro level of delivery of our services and hey if, if they still say no to you and they don't want you to come by you could always drive by and knock on the door said i was on my way to my appointment i you know, was in the air and say hi you got to get in front of them yeah and if look and if they don't want to talk to you that's okay you're not going to grab yeah. everybody yeah, but don't look like you're going to move in when you knock on the, you know how the agents do they'll knock on the door and go <laughs> well and they're hanging there for a long time it's kind of awkward no you act like you're going somewhere don't stay there like you're ready to camp out yeah, exactly. you know i just happen to have my suitcase with you i want to move in no you can't do that so you've got to look like you're moving forward they want to work with someone that's busy they also want to work with someone who um you know has a schedule that looks like they've got stuff going on they don't want to work with someone that doesn't look like they do this full time and i think a lot of times we uh we're not setting up the right tone in the beginning of the relationship. That's how we're going to make this thing work. And if you watch that video that they did, the, the Zillow CEO who came back into the scene did, they sold only 2,000 homes in this new program. They do want to buy more. All they got to do is flip the switch, man. They're rocking and rolling. Yeah. Right? Dude. So that should put enough of, uh, of a burn underneath our pants to learn the better skills and, uh, and hanging out with you guys and understanding that we've got to go to that next level, wherever you are. I mean, you may be at a high level, but there's still another level to go to all the time. You know? So Bill, how do you, how do you recommend agents go to that next level? What is it that, that agents need to do to get there? Uh, you know what? I strongly believe that we're so involved with selling that, which is, you got to know, we don't really understand us. Okay. We don't, we really don't understand how human behavior works and how to change our behaviors and, and, and really know that we're going to have to change. This is a mental, mental, physical, spiritual thing that we've got to get going on. And it's, um, you know, listen, man, I, I'm going to be 63 in June, but I'm going to tell you one thing. I'm going to be the healthiest 63 year old that's out there. I, I believe that. And, uh, but this is a, the game has changed. 
you have to observe your behavior. I have to observe mine and go, I have two choices. I can go down that other path that takes me to not where I want to go, or I stop and redirect the pattern. It was interesting. I was on a board of directors of a recovery program. Uh, my mm -hmm. friend ran it. I think sometimes it's, e and this is sounds sick, but we have addictive patterns that we have to break. Someone who's on drugs or alcohol, it's really easy, right? They look terrible. They're not showing up, but we're so good looking that you can't tell we have addictive patterns and we do have them and we have to break them. If you want to get to the next level, you have to observe what pattern that you're running to create a new pattern. Like I was just talking to someone just a little while ago that says, you know, I'm always got to get paperwork done first. They're three contacts away from getting to the contact goal they need and they stop. Well, you're somehow at that point, you're going, man, I think I'm going to sell myself on going down this path. You know, when the pain of doing it is greater than the pain of not doing it, we're, we're screwed. That's true, man. That's very true. I was, uh, I was recently talking to, I don't even know who, but we were talking about all the different cognitive biases, right? And since you've been on that uh, part of the board for these recovery yeah. uh, companies, uh, what happens is you're bound to talk about some cognitive bias. And the ones, the two that come to mind that real estate agents have to change or have to be aware of is one confirmation bias. And it's super easy to see confirmation bias is, is when you look at a, let's say a, a political candidate, we're just going to pick Trump just because he's there. Yeah. Uh, you can be pro Trump or against him and the pro Trump people, no matter what he does, right? He does it awesome. And the ones that are against him, no matter what he does, he's terrible. Right. Yeah. And that's confirmation bias. You're looking for things that are just going to confirm what you already believe. Right. And that's the problem. We look at our business in life that way right? Yeah. 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 That is so cool. You, you just, uh, you're right on to what I was thinking because there's two people inside of us, right? There's the person who wants to go down the old pattern and the new pattern person, right? You're fighting two people inside of each other. The, the old pattern, the, the old guy, the new guy, the new guy, the old guy is such a good salesperson. It's selling us inside our heads that we should just not do this thing because we're good salespeople, not knowing and not observing the fact that I'm being sold by my uh, complacency, let's just say, or I'm being sold because I, I, I don't want to do this thing. So I'm, I'm justifying not doing it. Kind of like what you just said. There's two people inside of us fighting. One of them's going to win. If you want to get to that next level, you've got to observe that I'm at that point. It's called a choice point, right? And I'm going to go mm -hmm. down that new direction. That new direction has to continue to happen to create another newer pathway that's deeper than the one that you've created that's in that addictive pattern. And um, it's interesting. Um, I interviewed uh, um, Jason Redmond. If you ever get a chance to interview him, you got to get a hold of this guy. He's a Ooh. Navy SEAL. Got shot in the face. Oh, wait. I think I know. You got his new book? Did you get yeah. his new book? I just got, he sent, so we're trying to get him on a, we're trying to get him on a, yeah. a podcast. We just talked to him. He lives down the street from me. Oh, he dude. Right here, man. Yeah, that's, he's in Virginia Beach. Yeah, if you want him to come out to your thing, I'll talk to him. But anyway, he's right here. He's right 15 minutes from my house. He came into my office. I interviewed him about a year ago and he talks about it. So you talk about getting to that upper level, that pro, that elite level. Um, he talks about when he was ambushed, he talks about these ambushes of life and ambushes, but think about it, man. These elite, they're not pros. They're above pros. Okay. And we're, we don't take this business at that level. Sometimes we don't behave it. Sometimes we don't even project it. We've got to go to pro and then, some of us will get to elite. And Jason talks about his experience as a uh, team leader for the SEAL Team 6 and what he went through. Great book. And um, if you get, uh, I should say, I'll send you the interview. Um, Dude, please, I'll post it up. Yeah, it's a great interview that we did with Espresso. Actually, we brought him in through Espresso and we, we interviewed him. And he came into the office here. And um, what he went through and what the mind can actually, how that could change he was getting shot at and his team was, they were being ambushed. And he said, listen, I sit there or I die. I mean, we're, we don't want to knock on a Fizbo's door. They're not shooting live ammo at us, man. <laughs> this guy's getting shot at and he figures he's got to split second, do something different. That's at a different level of thinking. I think, I think at that point, we just have to put our, our life into perspective and say, look, the business that we're running isn't 
life and death like these these people in the military or in third world countries that are being threatened every day yeah right we we're not fighting for our food or water on a daily basis we're just trying to make a phone call and connect with people at a deep level how hard can that be when you put it in perspective did you ever meet steve futch by any chance no man you need to introduce me to these people oh, this uh, uh ren knows steve uh uh in the old days. So Steve, he was a lieutenant colonel. He was in his late fifties when he got into real estate. Long story short, his, uh, and, and again, I don't want to mess up the story, but anyway, he had to move. Uh, his wife was a colonel also moved to Shreveport, Louisiana. His wife gambled all their money away. They got divorced. He had to get into real estate and get his money back. Anyway, he went knocking on doors all day long. We have to kind of coach him not to do that as much and get on the phone. But he just, that's all he did Monday through Friday. He went from 12 deals to a hundred some deals in one year. But he said to me, I, I've never going, I went to dinner with him in Austin a couple of years ago. He goes, you know what? Listen, man, they're not shooting blind bullets at you. I, here's a, he showed me his, he got stabbed in Vietnam in the back. He got shot over here. He just goes to the door. And one thing that I was impressed with, he knew when to pull back. He wasn't slam hard closing. He would always throw some type of bomb in the room, a little bit of a inside. Hey, you know, I know you're not ready, but when you are ready, just let me just let you know that I'm out here. The rest of the real estate agents in their office. I'm just demonstrating to you what I'm going to be doing. And this guy was in his late fifties, you know, came wow. with a suit, went to the door. He did that all day long, the same place every Monday, same market, Tuesday, a different market, same time, same and, he did it for years, went from 12 to 100 some deals. But they're not shooting live bullets at you, man. He says, I'm going to knock on the door. I was in Vietnam. What do we have to be afraid of, guys? I, I, you know, listen, when you're like, I had six kids, you know, we all have bills. Every house was important to me. And I remember driving around <laughs> going, there's someone behind the door with a wife beater t-shirt and a Budweiser and a shotgun. And I'm going to knock on the door. You know how you get all this stuff going in your head. And then finally, I, I knock on the door, the door opens up, and I'm looking for a six foot five guy, and he's not, <laughs> the, the person's not there. And I look down, some little old lady going, and I'm like drooling my scripts, because I didn't know, I'm like, <laughs> and the lady goes, come on in, son. And it was a Fizbo, she was really nice. And from that day on, I said, that changed my life on Fizbo's and expires. The second thing is when the Fizbo said to me, you know what, the only reason why I'm Fizbo, because I'm looking for a good agent. Think about that one. How many times are we not going to the door or making a call? Someone may be looking for a good agent. And so it's just amazing to me how our heads go. Unless we, you went back to that same question. We need to control our thinking. Yeah. If we don't control the way we think, we're never going to get to that upper level of, of production. And I think, I think the challenge is that first we need to become aware of this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. and you've heard of the drunk monkey or things like it. It's just it comes down to negativity bias, another cognitive bias. Yeah, exactly. And negativity bias is just for those listening in. It's just you, you always think the negative thing of anything you're doing. Yeah, and that's it's human to do that. You just have to be aware of it. So you're like, hey, hey, hold on, this isn't as bad as I think it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're you're so right. It, our brain is like a dog off a leash. <laughs> yeah. That's right. You know, you know, it's going to stop at a fire hydrant. It's going to chase another dog. If you don't control it, you're just not going to be able to get to the production you want. And, and once, you, I think we ought to be teaching that to people right off the bat. Guys, you know, because there's so much, so many directions we can go in real estate. Just stay focused. Um, there are a bunch of people that have been in business for a long time. It's not going to, they're not going to change. You have an opportunity. And this year, I, I don't know what you think, Tristan. This is going to be a big year. A big year in real estate. It is, man. It's still, the market is so good right now. Yeah, man. it's going to be awesome. So I, I, I believe that, uh, that you have an opportunity if we start to change. But I also think, and you just showed everybody all these books you're reading. And, and I know you do a lot of reading. I do a lot of reading uh, because I want to learn. I, I, I'm constantly wanting to learn. And if we're in a learning mode, we're going to get better because um, I've got to get better. You've got to get better. We all have to get better. But people that don't read on a regular basis are really not going to get better. <laughs> You've got to read, man. And, and we're, we're getting away from reading and I'm not a big fan of audiobooks because the audiobooks is not going to do it, man, because we're losing that ability to get 
that information in another part of our brain. We're just hearing it and it goes right through here and sometimes goes out and maybe you can pull over and write something down, but nothing like getting the book and reading right off the bat and marking it up. And you, you're, if you're like me, man, I'm always, um, I got more stuff in here and marking them up. And so that's what we got to do. And that's how you make your competition irrelevant by you first deciding to make that decision that I'm going to change. And what you were saying, being cognitive of these, be observant of some of these things that I do. And, uh, you know, I learned the hard way uh, and I've been married for 20 years. I know when I say something to my wife, that it will, it will go to a level 15 on a scale of one to 10. And I just figured that out. If I don't say that, it doesn't happen. <laughs> and I, oh, hey, that's true. cognitive. I go, maybe I don't, and guess what? She's nicer back to me. Yeah. Woohoo! That's back to thinking that I've got to be more observant in what I'm saying. So it helps you at home and in your real estate career. So don't forget yeah, that. Dude. All right, to wrap up, I have a question for you. Because the last time we talked to you, I remember you, I was very impressed by what you said on building instant rapport yep. with, with your language, yep. which is what we're kind of getting to. Can you go over that as we wrap up here? Yes. Um, when we, to build instant rapport, we've, we always talk about selling to the pain. You always sell to the pain. And while you're going through a process of understanding what the pain is. Most agents will stay on the surface. So there's an upside down triangle. Uh, I, want a, I want a bigger house. Okay, let's go off and find a bigger house. So what we've got to do, we have to have a technique of getting down deeper here, down to the heart of what the reason is why they want to buy or the real pain. For instance, uh, it's not that they just want to buy a big house. So I would say something, I would do a, a technique called the reverse and go, gosh, tell uh, where do you live right now? Well, we live in 1500 square feet. Gosh, that sounds big enough. Now, what, when you say it that way, what are they going to do? They're going to tell you every reason why it's not big enough. Instead of you sound like a salesperson, you sound like you were talking before, Tristan, by asking questions. They go, well, you don't understand, Bill. Um, you know, I got all these kids, and I want to finally get into a big house so I can impress my boss, and we're going to think about having another child. Okay, now we got deeper. Now, when you get a little bit of an emotion out of the person, you're getting a little deeper, you go, tell me more about that. See, most agents will even stop there. When you get really good at this, you continue to go down to that little drop of pure pain. And you go, well, tell me more about that. And they go, well, you know what? We've always wanted to live in a big house. My husband eventually would like to move up in the company. And then we want to have a child. We've been trying for a long time. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing about buying a house or selling your house is more than just, I want a big house. You want to do it. And you repeat that back to them. No one has taken that person to that level. We're too fast to do a deal, not taking the time to build that type of rapport with that person and get down to the pure, what I call the pure essence of the pain. That's that you have to practice. You have to slow down a little bit, man. Cause if you slow down, you're actually speeding up. Cause you know, you yeah. sometimes you never even know that. That's so true, man. I think one thing you, again, you're like, you trigger me, man. You trigger my brain. I love talking yeah, I mean, to you. We're, we're, we think about the same way. I, I love that dude. Uh, one thing you said there, where when you slow down and you actually speed up the process, I think it's because uh, as you slow down, you become more authentic and, okay, yep. and people can uh, click with you a lot faster. Exactly. Right? They, they, the, the, um, the, the fence comes down, that invisible fence comes down. You can see their body language relax, their body posture, everything relaxes. And that meter in the back of their head that says you're a salesperson now goes away. So now we've developed trust, honesty, empathy, and then you sprinkle in your knowledge and there's expertise. Now you're the best person to help them because now you understood the, what the real pain is. Now, if they ever get squirmy on you, you go back to the pain. You, never, you sell to the pain. Hey, what happened, Bob and Susan, about the fact that you wanted to a new, a new house to, you know, expand your family. I mean, did you give that up? Or so you, you can have this like normal conversation, but no one ever found out what that real reason was. And you did in the beginning of the relationship. Yeah. And now you've, you've gained that your IQ is at a level nine or 10, your intellect, your influence quotient gets higher. And the higher the influence quotient you have, the least amount of rejection and pushback you get from the client or the customer. I love that, dude. Yeah, you do get to the pain. I think pain is is really what drives 
a lot of our decisions as, as, as humans, right? It's just the core of it. Yeah, there's pleasure, but pain really drives pain. Our, our decisions in where we go. It's interesting. I, I love that. Dude, I, I think I could talk to you for a whole, I, I think I said this last time. Yeah, we yeah, man. For yeah. a very I, long time. I, I love, yeah. We, 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 we should have a beer, just sit around, just talk. We'll be there for like three days <laughs> and still you know, have energy to talk. I'd love to bring you on and bring in John Masillo and uh, Barry Jenkins, and which is all four of us. Yeah, Barry's yeah. out of your area, so. Is he down here in Virginia? Yeah, Virginia. He's out of Better Homes and Gardens. Okay, okay. Uh, Virginia Beach. So I think all four of us could jump on and just talk about mindset. It would be oh, really good. I, I would go. But you make sure you get in touch with me when you come down here, man. We gotta all right, man. I appreciate it. Well, anything you want to add now in closing? No, listen, guys, uh, just, just, re just remember where we are in the business right now. I mean, things are changing, and you have an opportunity this year. I think if you, you don't want 2021 to come in and go, gosh, I had that opportunity. I missed it. This is not the year. This is the year for you to get to that next level and, you know, continue to attack the uh, listings and the espresso information you're getting. And, you know, now that we have, um, you know, for rent by owners is another little source that you have access to. It's going to open up a whole bunch of doors for you. So, um, you know, it's going to be a great year. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I, thanks for letting me come on again, uh, Tristan. Dude, thanks for being on. Again, this one is sponsored by Espresso Agent and it's espressoagent.com forward slash lab code agents. They've got a special deal for you there. And Bill, thanks for being on, man. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Email me, man. We'll get I will. Together. Thank you. Yeah, take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.